Thank you for um, having me here today, Barry. Uh, actually, when Barry spoke to me about this session, um, we kind of connected over two things. Uh, we kind of bonded quite a bit about lean and agile methodologies, didn't we? We had a good old natter about that. But also, we talked about purpose and how, just how important it was in purpose-driven organizations. And I'm going to talk a bit, I mean, I'm coming from a product perspective here, so um, yeah, not super techie. And it was those two things, funnily enough, that actually attracted me to work at Just Three, just three Things. So firstly, um, I love, love, love the complex nature of the problem that we're trying to solve for the customer. Um, as a product person, um, and, and so it, to introduce myself, I'm Polly Howden. I'm Chief Product Officer at Just Three Things. Um, you can see I've worked for a number of um, you know, uh, large organizations. The, the challenge that you have as a product person is you kind of end up being the person uh, who glues together um, people around a vision uh, and tries to get them towards a goal. And um, yeah, product people are often described as the intersection between different functions. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe I can try and make myself um, uh, not needed. And um, the other thing was, well, uh, when I met Kim and when I met Erin, uh, who are the co-founders of this uh, business, I was just so impressed by how purpose-driven they were. It was really inspiring. So that's what brought me to the business. So I'm gonna to touch on three things. So the power of purpose. Um, I'm gonna talk a bit about um, the challenge that organizations are facing in terms of orchestrating agile teams. And then I'll do a little demo of our product. And what I'd really love is for you guys to give me some feedback at the end. So I'll, I'll try and get through in enough time so that you can ask me some, maybe not ask me questions, because I'm quite new, <laughs> but certainly um, give me some input uh, and tell me a bit about your perspectives. So we live in a world where, well, technology is accelerating. I mean, it's kind of already accelerated, but it just keeps on going. But actually guiding and harnessing technology um, is still a human and operational problem. So, you know, productivity growth is actually at its lowest rate since the 1970s, at just over 1%. And at the same time, uh, people are changing the way that people at work are changing too, and what they want from their jobs. So, um, yeah, I mean, people change jo jobs every few years. I'm sure that's no shock to you guys. You probably are those people. And, and why? Why are they doing that? So what they're really looking for, um, according to the data, is, is purpose. Especially millennials. I mean, we always talk about millennials, but, you know, and the generations that are coming up. So... They want to know how they're contributing to a better world. I mean, I do, and I think many of you here will feel the same way. I was really, I was sort of doing a little bit of research around purpose. I thought it's a really interesting topic to read about. And I was really inspired by this quote I found from this product leader, um, and she, she was talking about the difference between passion and purpose, and that passion is all about finding yourself. Um, finding your interest, following your interest, and uh, yeah, that, that's how, what passion is about. But purpose is actually about losing yourself, losing yourself in something bigger than you. And it's about wanting to do for others and leaving a legacy behind you. And that's what really makes people tick. So why does it actually matter? What impact does it have? So firstly, you get more motivated and energized employees. So 71% of millennials report that being actively disengaged at work. But when they work for an organization that is more connected, where they feel connected to their purpose, they're two times more likely to have job satisfaction and three, more, three times more likely to stay. And you get also, this has an impact on how your customers feel. So, 91% of people said that if they were given the choice between two products, one which came, which are both at the same price, one that came from a purpose-driven company and one that didn't, they would go for the one that was purpose-driven. So, very simply, that adds up to better business outcomes. 
and you see you know, better st stock market prices for businesses that do those things. So these two numbers kind of tell a story about your world, if you stuck your hand up earlier. I'll come back to these shortly. So companies around the world are uh, organizing, reorganizing their companies um, to be more agile with the aim of being more productive. So it's funny because actually I've worked in several organizations and I always thought, oh, I'm, I fit really in really well in businesses that are undergoing transformation. And I thought, you know why? It's because 80% of companies are doing that. And you know, I guess companies are always evolving and trying to do better. So 80% report restructuring of functional hierarchies. But it's really hard to make this theory. Um, I'm sure you all know kind of like the theory of cross-functional teams and Spotify model that is kind of you know, a core part of Agile and Lean. But it's really hard to make that a reality, um, even in you know, really forward-thinking organizations. And to translate the vision into the action. So I'm, I'm not going to take you through the whole table. Don't worry. Um, the big challenge is that for most companies, the actual culture that exists is at odds with agility. Um, so where they want to be is not where they are now. And you know, to pick out three examples of how these kind of new paradigms create big challenges. We've got, so with cross-functional teams, like how do you really know um, who, which teams exist and who, who's in them and how do they operate if it's a really large organization. Um, I can think of any number of terrible intranets that I've, I've seen in businesses. Um, and empowerment. Um, oh, it's one of the really, really hard things for organizations and especially exec teams, I think. Um, it's all very well saying we really want to empower people Right, but then people get really nervous about whether people are really actually working on the right things. You know, even if they trust their people, you know, how do we know that they know what they're supposed to be working on? And then um, a common purpose. So we've got this company purpose, we've got this company vision, but how do I understand that in the context of what I do at my level? And so Just Do It Three Things does exactly this by providing a framework. So it helps, it helps organizations to align their efforts. It helps get buy-in from every level. And it helps bring the right talent together around any problem. You can create teams. You know, It doesn't have to be a real team. You can create teams around any problem using our product. So back to the numbers. So 95%, that's the number of employees that do not understand their organization strategy. I think, I think, I think you were slightly better in here, actually. <laughs> and so it's not then surprising that only one in 10 companies manages to deliver fully on its strategy. So. At the core of just three things is transparency. And this enables collaboration. And with the data around goals and vision and those all lining up together, it empowers the people within the business at every level to do their jobs well and to create a great product for customers. And this is how vision is translated into action and therefore productivity. So I'm going to do a demo. I'm just going to have to switch my windows a little bit. So bear with me. So um, here is just three things, right? I work for this lovely company um, called RetailNet. And um, here I am. I've logged into just three things. And um, at a glance, I can see uh, my company's vision statement in this area up here. I can see the strategic pillars that relate to that. And I can see 
the goals underneath the strategic pillars. So, and it's actually like, it's really easy to edit the stuff, right? So, you can, I mean, for the person that has the privileges, <laughs> it's very easy, very easy to use. And, okay, so I work at RetailNet. Um, I have been told that I need to make a million pounds next quarter in my area. And so, I'm going to, I'm going to add an objective now. So, I might be a bit tricky with the mic and the typing, so bear with me. Just, you're just going to have to watch <laughs> while I type. Sorry, guys. Okay, so a lot of it is just clicking, so it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to make a million pounds by the end of the quarter. And we're starting today, and we're going to finish in September. And by the way, as I'm doing this, I would love for you to be thinking about, I'm sure you guys probably have tools or documents that you have to fill in around this stuff. So have a be thinking about how this might relate to your organization and you know, what feedback you might give me either now or afterwards. So I'm going to add a progress bar for the goal. And I'm going to set that goal. So once I've done this, I can also involve the right people. I'm going to get the revenue team on board. And I'm going to add, I know I'm going to need somebody from marketing. I know I'm going to need somebody who uh, can help us with some SEO. And that's the objective set up. Now, your objective is all about where you want to go, right? And the key results are about how the steps you're going to take to get there. So I'm going to set some key results. And you can do this um, in two ways. You can set, uh, my favorite one is the metric one, because it's much more, it's much more, it's much cooler to look at. But you need both those things, so we'll do that. So we are going to So I think that I can make 50% of my goal by selling 500 luxury accessories at an average of a thousand pounds retail price. Uh, and I could write a bit here about how I plan to do that. Maybe um, I'm going to add something about I'm going to improve SEO uh, so more people find us. I'm going to improve the page, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I'm measuring sales volumes. And my value is 500. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Zero. And that's going to finish ultimately in September. However, I think I'm only going to sell like. 75 in the first month because we're not going to have everything in place to make that happen. So I've done a bit of projections around that. There you go. Same people are working on it. And there you go. So that key result is now sitting nicely within the uh, objective. And I could add another one, say, for example, um, I'd like to develop a marketing strategy within the next month, and that would be a milestone metric, and you could also do many of the same functionalities within here. So what that then allows you to do, so I, I can see my target now, what I'm aiming to achieve. And if I had a description about what I was going to do here, it'd be here. And I'm just going to check in, actually, because I've just heard from sales that we have, in fact, sold uh, 10 already. So I'm going to check in, and I'm going to put 10. We've already got enough to a good start. 
So this is then plotted against your target goal. And the really nice thing is that you don't have to do this manually. So if you've got Google Sheets, you can do this automatically. It's all integrated. OK, lovely. So um, in this scenario, let's say um, I'm kind of waiting on somebody, though. So I want to know what's happening with SEO. There we go. So I can at Darren and say, hey, what's going on with the SEO agency? Tell me a bit more about that. And let's say um, this is not me, but this is somebody else from another part of the organization. They can come to this page too. They can see who's working on this, and they can get an update based on what's on here as well. Also, I can add some actions on here and be very clear about what we need to do. So this could be SEO. SEO research. And we need to do that soon, otherwise we're not going to get moving. OK, lovely. So hopefully that's nice and clear. That's how you do it. You can see everybody who's working on that. You can see the teams involved. It's nice and clear. OK. And all yeah, you can see all the teams together. So we're going to go back to the home page. The other thing that I'd like to do now is align the goal that I've just set up to the pillars and to the strategy. So now you can see that make one million by the end of quarter supports double global revenue. And you can see how that relates right up to the vision. And so if I, for example, was wanting to look at another part of the business and understand how other people's goals linked into each other, I could first finish the edit. And then I can see all the goals that are in the organization, in that pillar. And I can see how they all relate to each other. So we know that these things are all leading up into take our platform to new customers. I can see we're doing, launching a new employee VR experience, very innovative, to become a great employer. And I have my own profile page, so anybody can look me up. And I can see my goals here the ones that need action. But I can also set priorities, and this is really key. So you can, the name of the, the, the business is called Just Three Things because you can have only three priorities. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with like whip limits and things like that, just to keep focus. So I can now prioritize this objective, and then everybody can see that this is my priority. So if somebody is asking me about something else, um, you know, it's harassing me about something else, and I keep going, yes, it's going to get done. They can see what else is on my list and maybe talk to somebody or whatever. Anyway, so this is how we help organizations um, to really uh, to collaborate, to, to have the employees to have transparency. I'm just going to really seamlessly change my screen again. There we go. OK, so this has been really successful in improving productivity. So it was built inside Ovo Energy in 2016 uh, as a way to help the business scale and cope with the demands of uh, you know, organizational change around agile teams. And uh, yeah, a 10% productivity increase and 2.9 million pounds in savings. The, Employees really value the transparency, and Ovo Energy has um, grown from grown up to 1,500 employees um, in that time, and is one of the uh, is in top 20 in the best places to work in Sunday Times. So you know this has been part of that journey.